I like your hair. Shoot, I like yours. To what little there is. Yes, thank you. Um, you got some. As the off season, as you left yet last year, um, knowing the status free agency of John and Daryl, I mean, could you have imagined the band getting back together uh, and rolling in here uh, for another run at it? You know, that's a great question. But uh, if you know Bean, Bean always has a plan. And uh, I wouldn't put nothing past them. So for the outcome that we got last year, there was a reason for it. And I think that uh, upstairs is what I call like the, the management and the GMs and stuff like that. The upper class upstairs, I feel like that they seen the chemistry of the guys and they didn't want any chinks in our armor. So the best way is going through the hard times with guys that we know and coaches know it. So they brought the band back. So some guys are going to play their drums. Some guys are going to play their guitar. Some guys are going to rock out. <laughs> um, being mentioned at the end of last season, when asked about the running game, it was a collective effort in regards to why it wasn't necessarily where you guys had hoped it would be. From an offensive line standpoint, what are you focusing on now to whether you're changing something or whatnot to m maybe correct some of the things that were an issue last year? John, I don't want to be simple. But as you know, we just trying to be the best versions of, of ourselves individually. So it could be the best version collectively. And um, it's simply that, man, like whether we have to throw the ball a million times, run the ball a million times, we don't really care. Whatever we have to do to get in the end zone, we're going to do it just on a confident level. You know, it's not about just running and making the running game the best in the country and making it the best. No, nah, like we just have to do what we do well and just keep that foot foot forward. But, you know, the mindset is just being the best version of ourselves. And uh, we're going to dial, dial in and we know where it could have been better, you know, but we're not perfect and we're not meant to, to be perfect. And um, we all know it. And uh, this is a tough sport. And, you know, there's a lot of critics. So, you know, like we got as far as and we did. And you and and the world still says that, you know, the run game could have been this and could have been that. Yeah, absolutely. But, you know, further than we've ever been. As an offensive line, um, and I'm obviously I've never played offensive line. So this is why I ask, is there anything to when you pass that much, it's harder to get back in the groove to to run the ball? Or is there anything to that idea? Well, uh, another great question uh, as a wrench, um, you know, in a way, I guess analogy for it is what, like you're driving a stick shift every day and then you drive an automatic, which one's easier, you know, but reps, reps help, but what can we do, man? Like where, where we have a quarterback that, and I can throw, we have superstars that can catch. So. I would want the ball in whose hands and I would want the guy behind us doing, doing what throwing it. So whatever we have to do to, to keep Josh protected, that's what it is. Whether it's running, passing, we don't care, man. We really don't care. And it doesn't matter. Um, but of course, anything can affect and tip a scale on any form. That's just like saying, Oh, I drink soda. Is the water side like going to be less or is the water side like going to be more? Yeah, absolutely. If you drink more soda, there's going to be more water left. You know, <laughs> it's just life. Hey, I appreciate you, man. Good to see you again. Much love, bro. <laughs> ahead, I try to stay here. away from all the soda. I try to I try to stay away from all the soda, big guy, and drink enough water as I can. It's you all right. I mean? You choose your own life, <laughs> life, life uh, kinks, you know? I'm a root beer guy. Absolutely. Sure. Gotta have that mug. Gotta have that. Gotta have that. Or AW, either one's preferable. But um Loganberry. Off season, man. Uh, Logan. Oh, well, you know that's hey, that's a Buffalo thing all day, man. Um sure. the O-line. The O-line had a baby, man. This off season, man. Care to talk about the impressions of your new little brothers and how much being so close, basically one game away from that Super Bowl, how much of a bad taste did that leave? So um Sorry, Mook, I didn't really understand any question. So you said the O-line like had a baby. And when I think of that, I'm like, okay, so we drafted young guys. 
right? Is what you're like talking about? Right. You got you got three little brothers. You got three little brothers. What are your impressions of your new three little brothers? Yeah. So uh, and the young guys are good. Big kids. Uh, big kids. Like I mean, big kids. Um, the size is definitely there. That, but the talent is definitely there, and the will is definitely there. And uh, I'm I'm extremely excited for these guys. Uh, and they all have great like personalities. They all listen, learn. They understand the playbook extremely well already. Bobby is doing a great job dialing, dialing into each and every individual one of them. And uh, mm -hmm. it's been going well, man. And I'm really, really excited to watch these kids grow. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're here to take jobs and they're here to put pressure on the older guys. And that's what this sport is all ab about. So I am happy to see where these kids go and uh, and their growth, you know, with making us better and us making them better. Speaking of growth and, and making the community better, man, we know what your off scene was like. I mean, you've been yeah. all over Dion Dreamer, been diving into the communities all the way from your whole time in Ryway to, you know, 10 year olds in Ohio to, yeah. to, 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 to couples getting married. That's Bill's fans. <laughs> and now with Christmas in July, man, yeah. can you talk about Dion Dreamers uh, in Christmas in July? Man. Yeah. So uh, if anybody like knows me, I'm big in the community and I'm big with, trying to put smiles on people's faces and just giving people things to do, honestly. And uh, Tisha Parker, she's uh, like, she's been helping me uh, with everything and the rest of my team, like they've been doing a great job, but Christmas in Ju July, it's going to be a, a 716 day event. So as we know, 716 is the area code for Buffalo, but it'll be a 716 day, uh, like a festival, but like type of thing where uh, we're going to shut down a couple blocks on hurdle. And uh, we're gonna have vendors like out there. There's gonna be popcorn, ice cream, snow cones, like lit music, like like all type of like fun stuff for people to get out and just celebrate Buffalo. Cause um, as we all know, Buffalo does not get the recognition and the the love that it should. And uh, from me being here for the five years that I have been and been here, I have fully embraced Buffalo. So I and consider myself Buffalo, and I just want Buffalo to shine and for it to get the right shine that it needs and deserves. But Christmas in July, it will be extremely fun. I'm going to keep posting stuff about it on my Instagram and my Twitter. So just stay tuned and uh, please come out on 716. Absolutely, man. Hey, welcome back to football and enjoy Cat, man. I like Thank the hair, you. by the way. Much love, bro. Much love. Thank you. Hey, Dion, John Worrell. I'm a stick shift guy myself. For sure, John. I figured. Old school thing. You know, like that's that's a that's a skill that most people don't have. So I salute you. You know, fun to drive, fun to drive. <laughs> Facts. But uh, but you, you talked about bringing the band back, and that that's how you put it. And it shows a lot of faith that this team has showed in you guys. Yeah. Now the challenge becomes sustaining, and you know, and and improving. And how difficult might that be? What are the challenges now when it comes to that? When those numbers that this offense put up last year uh, might be tough to top. I mean, hey, John, like you've been doing this for a long time and you've been seeing a lot of ball. You've been watching a lot of things like you see the roller coaster of an organization. And as you know, every year it, it just gets harder. So it won't be easy. Whoever's watching, don't look at every game like, oh, they're supposed to do like, but like do this. Like, listen, this is a hard sport. We play the hardest job in, in, like in the world that I think so, because it's the only job that, that I really know besides shoveling snow. And um, it's just the way it is. And I truly think that every year it's just going to keep getting harder, the better that we get and the further that we get uh, in the season and in the postseason. And um, it's not even the thought is not even there, John, about topping and last year, because when it comes down to it, it's about wins and losses. We can have 50 yards running and a 110 yards passing. As long as we get a win, none of that stuff matters. None of that stuff matters. It like it comes down to W's and L's and whatever play is called on offense and defense and special teams, we just have to execute it. And when that ticket is punched, we are looking to have a W at the end of every game, confidently, Buffalo Bill style. And it's simply that.
Like, there's nothing about topping. There's not like none of that. It's just wins and losses, brother. And and knowing that now the challenge, as you put it, gets tougher. Does the mindset of the unit change, knowing it's been together and it's coming back? Um, does the mindset change in, in in knowing that you have to accept in in how you accept the challenge that it's going to be tougher? Well, the good thing is that uh, is we all know what it takes, and we all know that the that the battle and the grind is going to be that much harder, and uh, we all understand it. And the fact that we all understand it means that it's in front of us and we have eyes on it. So as long as we don't think it's gonna be a cakewalk, which anybody, which nobody does walking around in this building, we all know that like that was the message day day one. It's it's not going to be easy, trust the process. We all know it. But um, with us knowing that, it just gives us our best foot forward to uh, do what we do confidently. Thanks, Dion. Yeah, appreciate you, John. What's up, Dion? Uh, thanks for taking some time. Uh, it's good to see you. Uh, I think Mookie asked you a little bit about this, but I like I'd like to ask you a little bit more about about Spencer and Tommy specifically. You know, guys coming in. You, know, you were in their shoes. You know, a few years ago, coming into the league. What are your impressions of them? Not only of them as people and you know as pl as players, but like just the size. I mean, it's pretty unbelievable. Two guys six eight like that coming in the same year. What what have been your impressions so far? Skilled, you know, uh, young, but skilled. Uh, overall Im impression is uh, is good guys, like even though that you just mentioned it, but for anybody that comes here, we, like we like already know that the guys that got, like upstairs put them through the filter of what type of guys and they are, because they know the type of guys that they have in Buffalo. So with them being here, we already know that there are good guys deep down and, uh, I just think that the rookies are are gifted, man. They are extremely gifted. Um, that size is special. It's hard to come by. And uh, I'm just glad that that we have it because when it's their time, whether it's tomorrow or whenever it might be, they're going to do exactly what they're here for. And they're going to be something special when it's all said and done. Unbelievable turnout for your team as one of the team leaders. I mean, why is that? I mean, this is a group that, you know, it's no secret that the, the veteran leadership in the building, but the, the turnout here for OTAs, I mean, a voluntary workout, is, it's pretty, pretty special. What's your impression of that? Um, so you're basically speaking on the fact that the whole team is here, basically, right? Right. Right. So, um, like, like, that just shows that, we want to win, you know, like we're still human too. We have families, uh, whether we started early, started like on time, started a few weeks later, the guys that are here know what it takes, what we need to do day in and day out. And teams are built when we're together. It's just that in some situations, we just want our off season to be respected in certain ways. Just if it's a couple of extra weeks, if it's just a couple more days that we get time to ourselves, then we could come back and dial in. Uh, that helps. And that's what uh, our coaches and our GM helped us do. And because they did that and respected us for it, we're here. And, uh, and we're here because we want to be, and we're here because we, we want to win. And uh, we respect and those guys, because those guys have given us jobs to play the best sport in the world. So, you know, it's a respect thing as well. If they want us here, Shoot, we here, man. Like this is what uh, and we do, and we're supposed to be here, so we're here. And just for clarity, you mean adjustments like to other parts of the off season, so that you guys would show up here now, like, like a here and there, the type of thing. Like, all right, and we'll give today off, but just make sure and that you're here when you're supposed to be here. And that's the the dialogue and the respect that we have from the coaches to the players that we can actually even speak about that and be comfortable speaking about that and getting whatever needs to be solved, solved. And uh, the coaches do a great job of taking care of us. And uh, it has showed this off season that they have taken care of us. That's why, and we're here to uh, take care of them so we can go ahead and win and keep them confident that we're still a part of what they have going on or what we all have going, going, going on better said than them. 
Good to see you, man. Yeah, thank you, brother. Hi, Deanna. It's Jay Skirsky with the Buffalo News. Uh, thanks for doing this today. Skirsky. Um, you... <laughs> backed up a pretty strong season um, or, or backed up a contract extension with a pretty strong season. How important was that for you to make sure that there was no sort of noticeable dip uh, or complacency uh, to set in after you got uh, a contract extension? Jay Skirsky, let me tell you something, right? In this league, you got to perform. You know, they pay you, perform. They don't pay you, perform. The one word that is consistent is perform and being available, right? As long as I and perform, keep my mind on the, the team and myself, the rest of that stuff comes into play. When I got paid, I, I took it personal to be at a certain level and higher that I held in myself too. And um, I'm, I'm just dark, man. Like, I'm going to just keep doing what I can do to the best ability that, and I can, uh, it won't be perfect. As we all know, I make mistakes too, but, uh, I take it personal and I love and my team and I love Josh and my job is to protect Josh. So because I love Josh, I protect Josh and, uh, whatever comes with it comes with it. But if you're saying I did a good job, I appreciate you. I have to do better. You know, I'm no pro bowler, no all pro guy. I got to do way better. You know what I'm saying? And uh, as long as Josh is doing, as long as Josh can do what he's doing, I'm okay. You know, I'm fine. But I appreciate that compliment. And I don't know how to take compliments. So I, I, I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, you sort of touched on what I was going to ask you next. You know, you, uh, offensive line is such a collective position. You always talk about the group, the group. But individually, I'm sure you have goals and aspirations for yourself, whether those be, you know, pro bowls or all pro teams, things yeah. like that. Uh, you know, last off season, you talked about how part of your training involved like biking a lot of different miles yeah. and things like that and things that you were doing to uh, individually improve your performance. Um, what have you focused on this off season and, and how do you take that next step in your own individual game to, to reach those levels that you just talked about? Simply just self growth. Um, I, like I have to be the best version of myself, truly, and meaning that the rest of the stuff comes. All of of the bike riding and stuff like that. That's just a part of training and uh, crafting and my body and my conditioning. But I think it comes down to being the best version of, of myself. So the rest will and will show. Like as long as I just end every play. This, this season with the plus and not a minus, I'll be fine. And um, mind, growth, and body, and uh, simply those and those things. And that's nothing physical. It's all mental that I, I'm the best, and I'm the best version of myself. And uh, I'm going to just keep crafting at it. I'm obviously not perfect at it, but I'm going to keep crafting at it, whether it's reading, talking to older guys, talking to vets, talking to – talking to and retire guys, just asking questions that people might not think that I'm asking because they think that that I'm supposed to know. I'm going to just have no shield up. And I'm going to just be invulnerable and just ask questions and just be free and just be open to grow, grow and have growth. Thanks for your time. Yeah, I appreciate you, Jay Skirsky. <laughs> Jay Skirsky, my boy. Hey, Dion, Matt Fairburn here. How are you? What's up, Matt? Uh, nothing much. Um, I know you guys don't have pads on yet, but I'm curious if you've noticed anything about AJ Epinesa um, since you guys have been back in the building. I know he's, yes. he's kind of changed his body a bit uh, heading oh, yeah. into year two here. Yeah. So, uh, and that's funny. And that you mentioned AJ, I speak to AJ every day, obviously. Um, and I compliment him every single day, every single morning when I see him, when he's walking in from the weight room, every single morning, I said, dog, you look great. You put some weight on, you look great, kid. You look great. And then I asked him how, like, how does your body feel? And he's like, man, I honestly like it. I said, yep, we do too. You know, so um, uh, I just comp compliment him. Uh, he's taking reps against me and I can physically feel the difference. Like he's, and he's not a feather anymore. And, uh, and he's growing really, really well. And uh, I'm very excited to see what AJ does next. But he, he took that first step, 
and that was to, to uh, get his body and his weight right. And he's on the right course. And that's all that we can ask for as teammates is just head in the right direction to better yourself and better the football team. What do you remember about, you know, certainly being a rookie is its own challenge, but there's also that challenge between year one and year two. Everybody's expecting yeah. a big jump and, uh, you know, you have a whole off season. You don't really have the excuse of being a rookie again. So what do you remember about that for yourself? And, um, you know, maybe what you can expect from AJ in that regard. Man, uh, the sad thing is that there's statistics with first year to second year players that if you start off high, it kind of dips and comes back up. And, you know, that's all a part of it. But I honestly think this is a fresh start for AJ. So he's, he's a different AJ just with a stronger mind. But as far as his presence on in the football field, drastically different. And that's just from what he's been doing this off season. So I have no, no idea. Um, but I do think that it's going to be great um, just because of the approach that he's taking already. And he's just doing it. And I know that I said it and before, but he has his best foot forward already, which puts him in a great margin of success because he did what he's supposed to do and it should help him and it will help him. Thank you, Dan. Appreciate it. You're, you're welcome. Thing, Matt. Hey, Vic, Matt? we're having trouble hearing you. All right, we're gonna we're gonna move ahead to Dante here, uh, and and we'll try to get that squared Dante. away. Dante. Hey, Dan. How you doing? Good to see you. What's up, my boy? How you doing, Dante? I'm doing good, doing good. Uh, you talked earlier about the respect that you have for your coaches. How important is the continuity of the coaching staff to the players, and how does that translate to the success on the field? Yo, Dante, I uh, am shooting a blank. I don't know what the definition of continuity is. Can you help me? Just the uh, the all the coaches returning year after year. You oh, have facts. People, you have Frazier. How does that help on the field? Well, it helps because uh, – well, just from from uh, trust, knowing that what we're going to get in and out every day, we already know what to expect. We already know what makes the coaches mad, what makes them happy. And uh, we we know how to perform in the way that we're supposed to because our coaches have been with us for some time now. And uh, it's always a good thing. It's kind of like having the same high school teacher for two years or three years you know with having that teacher that that teacher knows their students and we know our teachers and it's just a good bounce back to learn and to be the best version of of us definitely thank you good to see you right. you're welcome okay i guess that's it Dion. thank you all very right. much all right appreciate you guys